Almost time. It's almost ready. We're almost ready. Let me see. I know a lot of y'all ready for that Super Bowl. Almost time. It's almost ready. We're almost ready. I know a lot of y'all ready for that Super Bowl. Y'all Super Bowling over there, huh? Like they ain't disrespect Colin Kaepernick recently, huh? <laughs> I keep hearing everybody sing the national anthem, sing the national anthem, sing the whole thing. Let's get to the last parts of it. That's all I was saying. That's all. <laughs> we almost ready here. Hold up. We are almost ready. to get busy so we can get some clarification concerning a couple things going on. That is very important. There we go. Check, check, testing. All right, I see, I'm sounding decent. E-T-E, Imhotep, Sini, Sinet, Ankwasta Jed, Henu, Uncle Ja Seneb, Ankwasta Jed, living at Wa Ank, you know, Dua, Dua, Dua for listening as as usual, for Shedi for listening, uh, very important. Um, <clears throat> and of course, Wakanda forever, Wakanda forever, baby, y'all know what it is. <laughs> but also it should say Remet's lifestyle forever, Kemet forever, man, taking over globally. And you see the panther skin. You see the priest. You know what it is. You know how it's going down. We shine our arm piece on him a little bit. It's a little bit of diamonds. We're not flashing too hard, huh? Mm -hmm. But it's time. To have one of those real discussions today, right? And so thus we will, uh, because um, it's very important to uh, discuss the nature of a couple things that are happening, right? Nature of a couple things that are going on. And um, let me bring up first, let me bring up a picture for you all, just so you understand. And I'll bring this picture up from time to time here so that you know exactly what we're discussing today and why it's necessary for us to have this discussion. Um, because too many falling short, man, too many falling short. Uh, we're going to look at a couple pictures today that are important, important for your understanding and important for you to be able to comprehend what's happening and for you to explain, right? Because too many times and too often I hear the word him nature, him ka, uh, when wet. Um, I don't even hear that one unless I use it. Uh, I'm a wab, I'm a pure priest, I'm a I'm a uh, 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 I'm a sem priest, right? You hear all these terms and all these descriptive this, that, the other from so many people. And when you use those, are you qualified? Are you qualified to, to have that term around your name is the question. Um, that's not a shot at anybody. I'm just saying I'm looking at things and I cannot get answers from the people who claim to have the answers. Right. And then a lot of people come and ask me if some of those people simply don't have the answers. And so I answer and then I hear what I told somebody else pop up over here. And nobody says where it came from or how they came to that conclusion. And then they run off and claim their sim or whatever they claim to be later. The truth is. If you're not studying, 
if you're not studying, slow down with what you claim to be. Remember, a sim, a himnetcha, a himka, a winwet, et cetera, et cetera, because there's a bunch of different types of priests. There's a bunch of different types of winwet. If you don't have those, uh, uh, if you don't have the curriculum, if you don't have the ability, if you are simply not, stop saying that. What you are is an Iker or you, you're a Ramech, right? You're a Hemenu, people of the sun, right? But what you're not, you're a Kometi you. I'm giving you different terms in Kemet that you can use, that you can say that you are, because these pertain to you if you speak that language. And this is your spiritual system. But you are not a sin priest just because you hopped off the couch and read a book. You need more than that. You have to understand uh, these particular priests, these particular titles are for people who have titles in day-to-day -day life. That means they have a function. And when you talk functionality, I'm, I'm getting into something totally different, but we'll get to what we're supposed to get to in a minute. We Because this is important. When you talk functionality, if you're not a doctor, you don't run around claiming you're a PhD. When you talk functionality, if you're not a mortician, you don't run around claiming you're a mortician. When you talk functionality, if you're not a lawyer, you do not claim to be a lawyer. You don't have the pedigree, do you? At best, you might try to claim a paralegal. If you're not a dentist, you don't say you're a dentist. If you don't have the knowledge, and that doesn't mean you know every single thing about that particular function. I know dentists who, you know, there's different types of dentists. There's an orthodontist, there's a, right? So you have to understand there are certain terms you just can't put on yourself if it does not pertain to you and you don't have the knowledge of the field or the skill to pay the bills, period. Now, with that being said, let me shout out to some brothers who are Shout out to Saber Wu Jau. Saber Wu Jau can speak and read the Medunetra. He doesn't know every single thing about Medunetra, but he knows. And he learned from a reliable source in uh, Sebayet Se Raketi Amen. Shout out to Infudishi, Jehutimus. Seba Infudishi. He knows the Medunetra. Right? He knows what to do with the stones. He can tell you things about healing your, your mind. And he can speak the language. Can he? Shout out to Sabar Reggie. Who is qualified to speak on this level. Because he studies. He's a sesh. He doesn't carry the spirituality on his neck. No. But he defends the culture. And will stand up for the culture and has done more study than half of you claiming these titles out here. Half of you claiming these titles out here. Right? Shout out to Saber Kalam in London. Huh? Who can read the Medunetra and similar to me can break things down, not just in Medunetra, but in other cultures that pertain to ancient Kemet. Right? Shout out to some of his understudies that run with him. Right? Medicine man, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Shout out to Black Ice TV, but they are not him that cheru. But they're running with a sabah from one, right? He knows what he's doing. He's broken it down for you before, right? So now. Shout out to Netchanet, breaking down the Medu, right? And I'm really shouting out a lot of the newer 
Newer cats. We're new. We're in our 40s. We're in our 40s. Some of us may have just passed over our 40s, 50s, you know. Some of the sabers I named the elders, we look up to them. Harry Kafra, right? Shout out to Sabah Patasa Care. Brothers like that have earned the pedigree, right? You have to earn your pedigree or don't claim it. Don't claim it. Shout out to Baba Heru. Even shout out to Jabari Osazi. But I'm telling you this, guys. If you cannot handle the business, be careful what you wish for. It doesn't mean, like I said, you're going to know every Stella, every papyrus. When it comes to ancient Kemet artifacts, we have the biggest collection by far over Abrahamic faiths, over said is, you know, Hindu faiths, et cetera, et cetera. We have the biggest collection. So we have to specialize in a field. This is why a Muslim uses the term sheikh. He's a teacher of this particular field in Islam, right? We use those same types of terms for those of you who know, who read, who know the different terms for different types of priests and their, their meanings and their job functionality. A lot of you don't. Now, with that being said, because I don't want to bore you, let's first look at what we need to look at, right? Let's get right to it. The Henunet, or the Hen, pardon me, the Henutawi papyrus is one that uh, apparently is befuddling a lot of our Ramech brothers. I thought uh, Sabar Reggie um, did a uh, an awesome job the other day on ISUPK, and that's kind of a hot box, right? So if you go over there, you know, number one, you're from a different faith. They're coming to you. It's called cross the line for a reason. You're going to get belittled. You know that when you step on the scene. So there's no question what's about to happen, right? Um, and I thought him and Sarnetta did well. They held their own uh, on the show, right? But that's not really the place to uh, break down a Stella of this nature because you don't even get a chance to break down what's happening. So let me present first and foremost what we're talking about as my as my screen goes crazy share 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 here it is so this is hindu tawi's uh papyrus right just so you know i'm gonna blow it up just a little bit and as we look at this it starts here on the right british museum number 118 Point two, if you want to get specific. British Museum. And in the beginning, you're seeing a female over a male form. As we move to the uh, left, this is the controversy where you see uh, a male form and another male form over the top of this male form uh, having nothing to do with each other, basically, right? Not in physicality. So nothing strange happening there as we go over here we have like a, a human headed figure with who's double headed because now at the end it appears like a jackal head or something of that nature and then we have it has legs it's walking and it has a shin right and then we have wings and we have a beetle symbol and as we move further down we're here with two lions with feathers on their head and a snake encircling another similar red figure to this beetle over here with plums on its head, right? So this is what's in question. And obviously you can see the controversial piece right here. This gentleman here has the phallus pointed towards his mouth. And this is considered to be a homosexual act. They continue to say that he's actually putting the phallus in his mouth. And as you can see, that's not the case. And if you could read, you would know it's the exact opposite of putting the phallus in your mouth. It's, we'll get to that in a minute, huh? So that's, uh, this, is, this is portion number one, right? 
That's first thing first. We'll stop sharing. So this is the first portion that we're going to deal with. So when it comes to this papyrus, uh, there's a few things about it. Um, obviously controversial pictures in, in the papyrus, but it's depicting the sky, right? So we're talking about parts of the sky. And because we're talking about different parts of the sky, it's very important to know what they are, what they mean, and how that correlates to what you're visualizing, right? Because otherwise, you're looking at a man play twisted with himself. He's bent up all funny. You're looking at another um, male-like figure with stars in his body standing in uh, like a, a horse or a dog or something, and then a female in front of him, you know, so looks like Twister, the gang, basically, right? If you don't comprehend what's going on. So <clears throat> I'm going to share one more time just so that you're familiar with uh, what you're looking at here as I start to explain and break uh, this papyrus down a bit. Um, not in full, but enough detail where you can you can uh you can understand what's happening right so we're going to start first on this right side i don't know if you can see my hand here and you see the body of the female here right this body depicts newt and we know it's newt because of this writing here on the right right Tafnud, blah, 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 Mesuti, Mesut Nacher, blah, 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 right? Iriyat, Imduat, Permen, or if, if you take another breakdown, Shita, you know, but we'll get to that. And I'm going to call it what I call it, right? Under here, you know, the Jet, Tawi, He. Right, stability in the Tawi, the earth, millions of years, simple stuff like this that should be able to be broken down, right? Simple stuff like this, right? So on the right here, we're talking about Newt, right? Over here, Iriyat, M, Duat, Asheta, Men, you will right so this is talking about uh being in the sacred place in the thankful places i call it the duat or the shita uh or the place of men the dominion of men if you ask me right men is also a form of heru and Haru's dominion is the earth, which is why we have a difference in our translations concerning these particular medu here. But I'm not going to get into that. Um, the consensus says this is Iriyat M Sheta, which would be in the Duat. But I say, what do you do with this men down here at the bottom, right? So <laughs> we won't get too in depth about that, right? And it says stability for millions of years, right there. Just so you understand what's happening, right? So we know in ancient Kemet a couple things. Number one, they believe in stability on earth and they think it's been there for millions of years, not 6,000 years, not 4,000 years, not a couple hundred thousand years, which they say they lived for at least four sun cycles. You know, sun cycles are 26,000 years. You know, the procession of the great year, right? So they're telling you, hey, right? So they're letting that be known. And as we continue to look, as you guys, uh, I stopped sharing right there. It's going to come back to me. But as you guys can see, in that picture, and we'll come back to it later. We'll get to it in a minute. It's talking about different different um, aspects of stability on Earth. Um, 
when you go uh, uh, under her stomach, uh, we start to talk about um, under her body, it's something like nature nefer imjat deshret, which is good, good nature, or for some of you, good God. Mejat <laughs> deshret, you know, and it goes into being in the thankful place, right? Nefer's good book basically is what it's saying. It's saying, it's saying Netra's good book, table offerings, right? That's what is that's basically what it's saying. It's telling you about making offerings. And above her body, where you see the gentleman going like this, um, it starts to talk about those table offerings and uh, giving praise and thanks for the earth, for the solar system, for going to the thankful place, the duat, the am duat, or the shita am duat, right? So it's telling you what these things are. So between a sar and a set, or between a sar and newt, because it mentions our set, right? Going down the back, but we won't get into that. It, it tells you, it says, Dua di unja kenet aket, right? So it's basically telling you, uh, you know, thank you. Dua, you know, say, you know, unja aket, great bull of the kent in the aket, right? In the aket. So it's thanking the sar, essentially. Um, in between newt and us and us or in between newt and a saw so that's what it's saying right between going down uh the back of uh newt there it's saying thank you it's giving praise to that part of the sky the kin the kinti right it's giving thanks um it goes down further um Says iri impet iri iri dua per neche nefer, right? So it's, it's starting to really unfold. Iri me pet iri, right? So the pet is the heavens, just so you know. It's being thankful in the house of nature, the good nature, right? So it's just kind of breaking these things down. And above the sar and down his back, I'm not going to get too in depth, right? Um, it says, Nebet waha perti mit ta necher ima. And I wasn't sure between the portion of it because it's a little blurry, right? Keper um, emit ref df hatep necher jehuti aset peresh, right? Or I thought it said Netcha Jehuti, but I believe it says Netcha Seb. But it looked like it said Jehuti. It looked like that was the, the Netcha in particular, but that could have been Seb. I have to read it again. And when you're going through there, it's basically saying, Lord of the Waha boat, house, you know, etc. And it's a little broken off in between, so I didn't finish the translation. And it's talking about a parish you know, body, basically, you know, when you perish and leave, you're going to the duat, right? You're going to the thankful place. Um, Nebet waha, right? So different stuff like that is what you see above a saw. And we're going to revisit uh, the picture in a minute and I'll start to break it down. I'm just kind of pulling from my head and I can look at the picture. We'll get to that in a minute. But through all of this stuff, Nothing ever is homosexual. Nothing is ever talking about boy or man. Nothing is ever talking about putting phallus in mouth. Nothing is ever strange. Which is why I'm just kind of going over each piece, kind of here and there, just to let you know. There's no strange parts about this. At all. At all. Now... Here's the part that's got everybody all bent out of shape, 
bugging out, right? Let's pull it up. Because this is the part you, you want to get to. The part that I've covered pretty much what it's saying. It's talking about the sky and the thankful place in the sky. Has nothing to do with male on male activity. Yet this keeps coming up. So when we talk about this particular scene, we're talking about this portion right here. This portion right here, right? And in this portion here, right here, it says Seb, Seb Tef. Now it says Seb Tef, and you all call Seb right here, Geb. That's because the click language lends that. Or as our brother Netchaneb was breaking down, the, the G and the K are interchangeable in Dogala. Well, I go even further back. I've been saying this for some time. The the uh the cuckoo people or the koi koi people or the koi san, which we'll stop saying san soon. San means thief, cuckoo means soul people, soul to soul, basically. The soul soul people use clicks. And they are part of chemic culture. And when you go to Ru and you go to Shu, this is when those clicks come into play. And also when you run into words like Geb or Gleb or Seb, as their brothers, the Maasai, start to break down that S more, this is when you see it's spelled Seb here. Tef. Tef. What does Tef mean? This T, this horn viper for the f this act of this uh this this snatcher right here who is seb or geb right here rolled up he's spitting he's spitting that's what tef means remember tef newt when keparas spits out tef newt the act of spitting not sucking as i heard some of our brothers say He's spitting on it. And he's spitting out who? Necher, Necheru, Necher, Nefer, etc., etc., etc. Right? Eerie, this, that, the other. Sin, Nebra, okay? So nothing in this is homosexual. And now I got to be a little candid. Because we're going here anyway, we're talking. If and and take the children out the room for two seconds, so I'll let them hear. It doesn't matter because they need to know. They need to know when when the when copulation is taking place with the female, as it was here in the first part of the picture. This is Seb under his wife Newt. Okay. And over here it says, uh, Neferi Aset Hetep, peace, right? Good or beautiful Aset in peace. So this is why, and I, I didn't really want to bring that up only because there's some things that I think about that concerning this particular picture. But we'll get to that at a later date. At a later date, when I finish my full translation, um, here we've got the Unja symbol, Sebayat. You know, this is this is the praise part we was talking about here before. Duat, say this is you know all this here. Kenti Arket. This is a place, a location. You see the location determinative. Just in case anyone says, no, he's making it up. No, we're giving you the real deal, right? The duat right here. House of the ne nefer, 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 the good nefer, the good God. Like a rap record. Good God, right? Good nefer for my atheist, right? Good nature. So back to over here. Seb Tef, he spits, he's fathering. Who? Netcher. What kind of Netcher? 
Not no weirdo netcha. Netcha nefer. And I won't get into the small parts. It's not necessary. Right? Spitting out good natured gods, good natured aspects of the universe coming from him. So if you've been with your honey before, and I know you've been with your honey, and maybe it just wasn't your night and she wasn't turned on by you, what's the first thing you do? You might lick the fingers, right? You might take a, uh, uh, you might take a dab, just like you turn the page. You might, uh, uh, take a dab on your fingers, huh? Huh? Some cats would just spit on it. Yours or hers, so that you can make things happen. Do you understand? Do you understand? When he spits, creation happens. This is the earth. And this is the bull of his mother, or the strong, a saw, right? He's taken over. He inherits what he gets, what he gives. He is the, he is the spirit in, in entering the earth in some texts, and he is the earth. You'll find texts that say Geb or Seb. And they talk about the earth or Ta or Tawi, the United Two Lands. But when they say Ta, they're talking about Seb. And Asar above him inherits his father's inheritance. He takes over. He is now the spirit moving amongst the earth. And the only reason why I, why I think these say men in certain areas is because eventually who takes over a SARS crown? Men. And what is men? Men is a form of Haru. Men becomes the king on earth. And the passing king becomes the Asar because men inherits his what? His inheritance. So the inheritance went from Seb inhabiting the earth, becoming the earth, a spirit inhabiting the earth, right? Like a spirit is in you, a spirit is in the earth, the earth is alive. I keep trying to tell you all this. Seb is alive. Asar takes over his inheritance. And eventually, Asar's son, who? Heru, takes over his inheritance also called men, also called men, just like a SARS, also called who? Sokar, just like Seb is called who? See, and I could, we could keep going down the line. So you have to understand what you're looking at and what you're seeing, right? Seb is also called the great cackler, right? As you see here. That's what this medu is right here, right? The cackler. And we're not going to get into this, but this is talking about him spitting out men and women, right? You see the men and women down here. And I won't get too in depth into that, but that's what it's talking about. I'm just telling you straight up, straight up and down so you have no questions concerning it, right? So you start to understand what you're looking at. Over here is something different. Now, this figure here, I'm not going to get into because it's, it needs more breakdown before I'm ready to divulge anything about it. <clears throat> but this is basically talking about a part of the day. This could be a part of a day when these things were created. I'm not sure. This could be the part of the universe in which you go to where you will see these things. But this is talking about a part of the day. This is Kepara. This is morning right here. This is morning. And then over here, we have Ra with the feather of Ma'at on his head for righteousness. And we have Asar with the feather of righteousness on his head. And here we have Haru in the Arquette. 
and the snake of infinite years surrounding him, basically. Haru M. Arket. Haru is in the Arket. Haru is in the horizon. And the two lions make up the horizon. So because a lot of you have never seen this depiction, I'm going to make it a little more clear for you. I'm going to take you to, let's see which one. What do we go to that I have? You can see it. Let me see. Let's go to my pictures. Let's blow one up. Here it goes right here. This is the same thing. This is the same thing. This is Ra. This is Asar. This is Haru in the Arket. And this is life. How does this break down? And I've done this a couple times. This is Dua'u. Yes, this is tomorrow. This is Haru in the Arket. This is today. This is the life that you lead right now. And this is Saf. This is yesterday. This is the past. We build on the past to create our present, which will dictate our future. Haru M. Aket is a serious meaning and a serious term that most of you don't take that seriously. But now you understand what you're looking at. Now you're starting to understand. But let's bring it home. Let's really bring it home. Because I've said all this stuff about this being that and that being this. And this is supposedly this picture that I painted. If you want to check your resource, go get your literature game on, right? Let's see. I bet you we don't have to go far. I said, I bet you we don't have to go far. It's in the very first 11 utterances that we can get what's happening right here. Pyramid text. It's in the very first ones. One through 11. That's, a, this, that's how simple this work is. Let's put up the picture. I've told you what I've told you about it. The thankful place. Asar inheriting his father's uh, inheritance. Right? I'm talking about all this stuff, right? I'm talking about yesterday and tomorrow. I'm talking about the Netcheru being excited about certain things. Let's see if what I say matches up. Let's see. I bet you it does. There goes your picture. This is your picture, right? Let's read. Utterance one, recitation by Newt, the greatly beneficent. That's this lady right here. The king is my eldest son who split open my womb. He is my beloved with whom I am well pleased. So they're talking about the king who they always considered to be who? Heru until he passes away. And then they considered him to be who? An Asar. He's going to heaven. You see the stars in his body? You see the stars in his body? He's going to the Arket. Recitation by Geb. The king is my bodily son. And then pieces are cut off. Utterance three. Recitation by Newt the Great who dwells in the lower mansion. The king is my beloved son, my firstborn upon the throne of Geb, with whom he is well pleased, and he has given to him his heritage in the presence of the great, what? Enied, the great Pesedjed too. Hemenu, or Enu, I should say. All the Neturu are in joy, and they say, how goodly is the king, his father Geb is pleased with him. Is this starting to make sense to you? Is this starting to make sense to you? Newt and Geb create Asar. 
aset, nebethet, set in the elder Heru, don't they? They're pleased with him. So once again, Seb or Geb, Tef, Necheru, good Necherus, right? That will, that will run the Tawi, run the, run the earth. Nebra will look over them. Father Ra is going to look over them. Is this not clear? Let's go further. Recitation by Newt. O king, I have given to you your sister Aset that she may lay hold of you and give to you your heart for your body. What are we talking about here, huh? Men waha nefer necher necheri aset hetap in peace, etc., etc. We're talking about what, huh? Hetap necher aset. Can't see that last portion. Talking about asar neb up here. Nuhet taking over. The great cackler, mit, netcher, etc., taking over the inheritance, kepara, emit, blah, 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 etc. Asar is about to run things. Here he is right here. Hmm. And if it's the king, he's making a divine transformation, isn't he? That's what's happening right here in this pyramid text. And they're calling the king this is Saul. Let's go further. Recitation by New. O king, I have given to you your sister, Nebhet, that she may lay hold of you and give to you your heart for your body. So Aset and uh, Nebhet give the king his heart. Recitation by New, the great fruitful one. The king is... The king, my son, is my beloved. I have given to him the two horizons that he may have power in them as Haru M. Arket. All the Necheru say, it is the truth that the king is your best beloved among your children. Watch over him eternally. And what is this over here? What did we just talk about right here? Haru and the Arket. The king ruling the Arket. We know what this is. We know what it is. You know what it is. All you had to do is open up your pyramid text and it'll start explaining, it'll start talking to you. Let's go to utterance seven. Recitation by Newt the Great, who dwells in the mansion of Sinit. The king is my son of my desire. I have given to him the dua. The what? The dua. The Shita Dua. <laughs> right here. Right here. Right here. There's another one over here. She gives them the Duat. Let's go further. That he may preside over it. As Heru, who presides over the Duat. All the Necheru say, your father's shoe knows that you love the king more than your mother Tefnet. Goodness. Goodness. Do you understand? Let me read that again. Recitation by Newt the Great, who dwells in the mansion of Sinet. The king is my son of my desire. I have given to him the Duat, that he may preside over it as Heru, who presides over the Duat. All the Necheru say, your father Shu knows that you love the king more than your mother Tefnut. Period. So stop playing games. Stop playing games. Let's go to utterance 11. Because if you get into utterance 20, it's just going to confirm even more. But if you if you go that far to your pyramid text, which is a shame that most of you haven't, that's just three pages of this book. But let's go to utterance 11. Recitation by Newt. I enfold your beauty within this soul of mine for all life, permanence, dominion, and health for the king. In other words, Anku Jasaneb and Anku Astajed, may he live forever. In the discussion... In the discussion, we're done. 
primary resource pyramid text how you want it huh explaining the same thing i just explained to you in case you had doubt in case your mind wondered and we touched on this here teff spitting not sucking spitting now i heard some brothers say sucking but no that's explained in other symbology that's explained in other symbology because when a sar inhabits the the earth takes over his father seb's possession and inheritance that's when we start talking about seed nurturing the earth teff is simply Getting it wet. <laughs> Getting it wet and ready for his wife, the solar system. Now, the earth is married to the solar system. The solar system is the lower mansion. Why? Because Het Heru is your galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. And above her is Tefnut. And above her is moot. But that's for later. You learn that when you study stuff like the Opet Festival. The Festival of Fertility. Since we talk about all this fertility. Things you need to know. Things you need to know. Procreation. Mother and father creating daughter and son. It was celebrated. It was commanded. Get busy with one another. Right? Don't do too much. Get busy with one another. Procreation is not a bad thing in ancient Kemet. Loving yourself is not a bad thing in ancient Kemet. Right? The way you love yourself is to procreate, to make more of yourself, to multiply, to spit out the natural root. I don't want to hear none of this sucking. And then there's another thing we need to tackle because, uh, what's the name of this papyrus? I heard Taz bring it up. Um, Let me bring up the papyrus. Let me see if I got it. This is so you know. This is so you can start to make sense when you talk about these things, right? It's all about just a little bit of homework. It ain't a whole lot of homework. Just a, just a little bit. That's all. That's all. It don't take much. Um, What's the name of that papyrus? I just need the name of the papyrus is all. I don't need to because I know what the papyrus talks about read some of it before not too much of it because number one it came during the Ptolemaic era this particular papyrus I think it's called the Pacusa Stella that's what it's called it's the Pacusa Stella this Pacusa Stella just like uh its time frame came from the Ptolemaic era there's certain things you can take from the Ptolemies and certain things you cannot. Certain things you cannot, right? So you need to be very careful what you take from the Ptolemaic era if it does not have backing in ancient Kemet. Simple as that. Shout out to my brother Lowe. Shout out to my brother Alan. Shout out to Harry Singh. I see you all in the building, right? Simple work. We're talking about here. Um, the Pacusa Stella, and 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 I'll say this uh when I when I tell you that, when it comes to um uh the Ptolemaic era, why you have to be careful is because just like this story about Seb, I'm gonna tell you briefly, they changed things like our calendar. The calendar was changed. 
right? And this is what Patasa Care is always trying to tell you about, whether you agree with nine days or not, even though we have something that says 10 days in ancient Kim, whether you agree with nine days or not, you have to understand there's a change that took place during the Ptolemaic era. Simple as that. Simple as that. Now, let's talk about uh, the Stella for a brief moment here. It's the... Uh, uh, Pacusa Stella. I can never remember the name of it. Pacusa, right? So basically, Geb, who's the earth, um, waited till Shu traveled with Ra on the boat, as he did nightly, right? Shu gets injured in the battle with the Pep. And when he gets injured, he supposedly dies, right? The wind dies, his father, the wind. So the earth rapes his mother. And after he rapes his mother, he's not chastised. He just goes on to become great. And he goes on to become the heir of the Necheru. And he's such a great ruler, you know, he, the earth becomes the seat of Geb or the seat of Seb. Now, you find me the uh, Ramech equivalent to this, and we can talk. <laughs> Aside from that, no story is mentioned before this story in the Ptolemaic era that ever said Seb raped his mother. Show it to me. Show it to me in the pyramid text. Show it to me in the coffin text. I got the books. Show it to me, playboy. This is a challenge to ISUPK. Before the Ptolemaic era, you show me the story where Seb rapes his mother. If you cannot, because clearly it was an attempt to demonize Seb and make the earth a female, Demeter, later by the Greeks. It never happened. It didn't happen. The second thing we're talking about elements. We're talking about elements. We're talking about the earth. We're talking about our immediate solar system. Right? So the, it couldn't have raped it anyway. Right? It's not a... It's, it's a story about what's taking place in the elements of the sky and what's happening here on your planet. That's what you're talking about. That's what you're talking about. And with all that said, I did not even have to go into your Bible like I'm about to on my other channel. Uh, when we talk about the relationship between Egyptians <laughs> and Israelites and which one you're more likely to be, an Egyptian or an Israelite. And we're going to use the Bible to cover these things for you. Because some of the stuff that you guys are saying is crazy. It's crazy. And then I got to talk to my younger brothers because I need you guys to know who, the how, and the what, right? And pick, pick. Um, pick a job. <laughs> pick a job, right? If you're going to be a windwet wob, start learning about astronomy, astrology, right? If you're going to be uh, uh, an ampoule, I'm not going to say the long term that it is, then you need to start studying the morticianary work or some type of doctor position so that you can be who you claim that you claim to be. I don't want to hear you just throwing out him, him, that, and you don't have any credentials in it. I watch brothers try to shoot Patasa care down on a regular basis, but you know what he does? He knows astrology and astronomy. What he doesn't know in astrology, he knows in astronomy without question. He the one that had you out here watching for serious, right? I can go pull the telescope out right now. You should be able to pull out a telescope at best. You should at least be a stargazer if you claim the titles you claim. And when a stellar like that comes up about what? When wet and the Kamiya, the sciences of the sky, of the when wet to be an astrologer in ancient Kemet, you should be able to break this stuff down a lot better. A lot better than what I see from you. And that goes for everybody. 
including myself, as I always say. And because the Super Bowl is on, remember who you are and be in the SAR and don't let nobody fool you with this BS business about the earth being gay when he's spitting. He ain't suck nothing. Nothing was sucked up. You suck for saying it like a vacuum. Holla at your boy, Uncle Josh and them.